Warp Studios proudly presents D13 Live 2.0. Your protection from deception. As the world grows darker, we must stand together and stand out in truth. The truth in Jesus Christ. Welcome to D13 Live 2.0. Technology's wonders. Ignorant just me simply means you don't know. But if you don't know and you have the power of influence over others, that's dangerous. If you don't know and you don't know that you don't know, that is particularly dangerous. There is no debate. Climate change is a fact. Now, as for getting your morals from the Bible, I very sincerely hope nobody does. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system. That Jesus is the Son of God who is redeeming humanity from original sin. The idea that we are born in sin and the only way we can be redeemed from sin is through the death of Jesus. I mean, that's a horrible idea. Megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about the, the recent push to implement intelligent design in school curriculums? That's, it's very dangerous. bad. It's dangerous. very dangerous. dangerous. You don't mess with, with, with the truth. You can see an agenda. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. All right, we are live with D13 2.0. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we have Robbie Davidson with us tonight and we're gonna be talking about his uh, documentary, Scientism Exposed. It's just been released on DVD. You can find the link in the description below. Also, we are now live streaming also through our website where we have an interactive chat there. Uh, the link will be posted in the chat throughout the night. Uh, so if people want to continue to chat after the show, when YouTube shuts down, that chat will pretty much be going 24-7. So just go ahead and check out the link. I'm just trying to get people used to when we will eventually start streaming just through our website and not just YouTube when that day comes. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we got Matthias here, my co-host. We'll see if he has any announcements. If Matthias. Is all right. There. <laughs> no, Matthias is here. Sorry about that. I uh, turned on my camera earlier and I was like, oh, wait, uh, I'm behind the uh, green screen. So I just had to get rid of that real quick. Sorry about that. Um, no, no, no announcements here. Um, other, other than the Facebook group, it's really turned into a really awesome fellowship. So uh, anybody who's on Facebook, um, uh, go to the D13 Watchmen group uh, and join us. Um, uh, there's been a lot of questions, a lot of answers, a lot of edifying, a few false um, uh, false teachers in there, but it's fun engaging them. Um, but it's turned into a nice question and answer session. So uh, if you have a Facebook account, which I know a lot of people don't, but if you actually went down my wall, you wouldn't see anything of my family because Facebook is like a CIA database uh, gathering place. But um, I use it for, you know, ministry, meeting people, uh, communicating, but I don't give any of my personal information out on there, and I get that. Um, so other than that uh, and the... Uh, the TIC network that we're working on don't really have too many announcements. All righty, you with us there, Robbie? How's it going, guys? Thank you so much for having me on tonight. It's such a pleasure, as always. 
Absolutely. I know a lot of people have been wondering if you fell off the edge of the earth or not. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, so super busy. I've just kind of disappeared. But, no, I've been uh, working hard on uh, Scientism Exposed um, and uh, been able to get everything launched. Uh, the DVD pre-order uh, just got put up a couple of days ago and uh, the encouragement and just even the response has just been phenomenal. I'm just so happy. I'm so excited uh, for the world to see it. It will be available November 21st, 2016 on YouTube. And also if you want a physical DVD at the uh, special pre-order price of 14.99. So it's a great, great price, but again, it's optional just so everyone knows it will still be available for free on the same day on YouTube. Awesome. Right now, that's that's because uh, you know people will be like, oh, you're you're charging for it, but the fact that you're releasing both at the same time, I mean, it shows it shows where your heart is, uh, and giving somebody an opportunity to support or to be able to share it. You know, a lot of people don't get on the internet. A lot of old people, you know, so having an opportunity for people to bring to mom and pops and be like, hey. Look at this, and uh, and I, I love uh, I love the trailer that we just watched. I had seen it before, but the fact that you're showing that it's like the opposite of the gospel um, is phenomenal, uh, and the fact that you're using their own words, literally their own words, against them, um, and putting it into a format to where everybody can understand, it's a uh, it's an attack, you know, it's, it's a, it's been going for a long time. Uh, it's not just, uh, a scheme, an accident. Uh, this is a full fledged attack on the gospel of Christ and really the coming of, of, uh, of Christ. Cause I look at, uh, the whole climate change is Satan giving excuse for Matthew 24. You know, the things that God said will happen right before Jesus comes back. Um, you know, with yeah, exactly. the earthquakes yeah, in different a, places. and Yeah, it's a really good point. Like I said, I mean, he's masquerading in, in so many different things to account for what God says is going to happen or how God describes the world. He twists things. He turns things. Uh, it's exact opposite. I mean, you'll find in the Bible, if the Bible says that the stars are small and they're going to fall to the earth, where science says, no, they're gigantic and they're billions and trillions of light years away. I mean, everything is completely opposite. If God said that he created everything in six literal days, you know, scientism will tell you, well, no, no, no. We know that happened over millions and millions of years, you know, through this primordial, you know, theory of theirs. Uh, and again, when we're talking, you know, scientism versus science, that's the key thing here. And I think I, you know, Make sure that it, the people that are involved, uh, we all talk about that we love science. Science, the empirical method, you know, experimentation through observation, uh, you know, being able to repeat something, to observe something. But again, most of the stuff that people are taking as scientifically, you know, being proven in fact are nothing more than theories. I mean, it goes a, a lot further when you get into the spiritual agenda. We can talk more about that. But really, a lot of this stuff, you know, how many times do we see flipping through you know, whether it's social media or the website, scientists discover and scientists now believe. And again, we constantly just believe this and we're all kind of guilty of this at some point where we're just constantly like, oh, this has happened. This must be true. But you're going to find that the majority of scientism is the stuff that is the most deadly because it deals with our origins. It deals with the future. Um, it deals with a lot of things when it comes down to even, you know, where things are going with transhumanism and we're getting into eugenics and all these type of things. Uh, again, comes down to the evolved method. This is good for society uh, because we're the scientists. Don't you know? debate with us. The debate is over. The science is settled. You'll hear that all the time. And again, it's not. And for most people, it is so important to look into it. Uh, when you hear something, we should always be investigating the truth. And again, searching for the truth, you know, is only found in, in Jesus. You know, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And again, truth is important. So when people say, hey, what does this matter? Well, truth matters. And again, if they are lying, and sometimes people believe that this lie, it doesn't make any sense. Why would they lie about something so big or so grand? And again, that's the point. The point is, why would they lie? And if there is an eternal consequence, if there is something that is so, so big, uh, and again, the world is run 
by, you know, a force that is a lot greater than just mere men's imaginations. And again, when you find out there is an agenda and there's a real reason why it would be important to uh, masquerade, to uh, disguise, but above all, to try to hide the true creator of creation. And I believe that when you distort that, you'll find that even statistically, most people fall away uh, from the Bible, from God, is because of scientism. It's because science has proved the Bible is can't be trusted. It's not true. It's fairy tales. Or it's just good for, you know, make you feel good. Uh, and again, I think as Christians specifically, we have to really stand on the Word of God. I mean, it, we are at war. And we can, um, you know, have our more than just faith. We can also look and we can prove these things. It says prove all things in the Bible, test all things. And we're commanded to do these things because, again, it is important to God. And just like we've discovered when it comes to evolution, and dinosaurs, the lies within those, we start moving into the cosmology. We start talking about, okay, well, this is what they've told us about the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, um, all of these things. And again, when they are completely 100% contradictory to the Bible, we have to wonder why. Why aren't even just some of the things lined up? Why is it that everything is 100% opposite to what the Bible says? Now, when I say, you know, opposite to what the Bible says, I'm saying that we were going to take the Bible literally. And again, we have to stop getting to this point where we start picking and choosing what we take literally and what we don't, especially when it comes to creation. Why is it okay to take six literal days, but then not take, you know, when it comes to the firmament? You know, but people have come up with canopy theories and they've come up with gap theories to try to to try to bring it in to what science has discovered. Well, science proven that it's evolution. So therefore, it must be a gap theory. It can't be literal days. Or we have to come up with a canopy because we all know there's not water up in space. You know, science or NASA has already proved that. So I think we're in a very dangerous um, level, especially society, because we're in a very scientism society at this point, because the scientists have become the wisest of the men. They're the ones that basically link up with the politicians, NASA, and I throw NASA in there with the scientists, because again, they're the, they are the space scientists. And again, we're looking at basically theoretical science. We're not looking at true science. And everyone really needs to take this as a very, very important because it is an assault and it is an attack on the character and the validity of the Word of God. That's right, especially, you know, the biggest mind blow for me was when I reread Psalms 104. Oh, please elaborate on that. <laughs> uh, let me go pull it up. Yeah, Psalms 104, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with a light as with a garment, who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now, that's pretty interesting. He lays the beams of his chambers in the waters. Well, what's outside the firmament? It's water. Because in Genesis, God separated the waters from the waters. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I mean, we've all, we've all read that and, you know, maybe at one point scratched our head because we couldn't figure it out based on the space narrative that we've been sold. Uh, the heliocentric, you know, universe, uh, you know, it became very confusing. I mean, at what point, where is this water after, you know, 18 trillion light years away, then water starts. And then again, you get into the flood where water, you know, there's three sources of water. You know, you have the water from the clouds, the rain that came, but then you have the fountains of the deep, which I find interesting. No one argues the fountains of the deep. They'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, uh, cracked open and water came from below. But then when you start talking about water came from above, well, you know, that's where people start saying, well, it's allegory or it's in, you know, that's a different interpretation. That water fell, you know, above, you know, onto the earth. So therefore, on the space narrative, what we, we've been taught, um, how does that work? I mean, how does water travel, you know, all these light years and then start, you know, falling onto the earth? I mean, it just doesn't, right? I mean, you have big problems even when, you know, Jesus ascended, you know, when he's coming back, all eyes will see him. I mean, we're, we're just, we're dealing with something that, you know, is very, very big and we have to look and take it serious because again, Satan would try 
to destroy the foundations of the Word of God. And really, if you think about it, Genesis sets the foundation. It sets the entire salvation narrative. Everything that basically happens is very important, even down to the timing. Because if there were animals that roamed before us, and there were dinosaurs, and they died, well, the Bible very specifically says that, you know, death came through sin. Therefore, there, sin had to be in place for death to occur. So then if death was already happening, you know, there is no Adam and Eve. That's silly. That's nonsense. That's just a fairy tale. But then we have another big problem. Jesus himself talked about Adam and Eve as people. He, ta- he accounted for these stories that are so-called, you know, fairy tales or just stories. Jesus himself, the Messiah, is actually t- mentioning these stories. He's mentioning Sodom and Gomorrah. He's mentioning, you know, Noah. He's me- these events actually happen. So at one breath, you could look at it and say, well, I'm not sure. But then you're going to now go against Jesus and, and far as whatever he said as well. So you've got a big, big problem. You've got a big problem with the fact of uh, salvation coming through Jesus, why he had to die, the whole crucifixion. You know, everything is spelt out. And I look at Genesis as very, very important. And, you know, it just seems that there have been a lot of people that have looked at a very small portion, like saying, well, that's literal. You know, six days. Yeah, yeah, yeah we take that literal. Everything to do with evolution. But anything you start talking about, like the firmament, or you start talking about the sun, moon and stars were created on the fourth day. Well, wait a minute. They were created after the Earth. OK, let's all go back to the Big Bang narrative. Big Bang. You cannot have a Big Bang like we've been taught having the sun, moon and stars being created after the Earth. The earth, like so again we have big problems we have big problems also with the fact that that stars are not suns we have the sun moon and also stars god created they are distinctly different than suns well what has scientism taught us here we go they're oh no no silly stars you know you know twinkle twinkle i wonder what you are sort of thing well they say no 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 that's a silly little nursery rhyme we know what they are they're suns i mean scientism are so arrogant and they just basically say, no, we know what it is. Well, I mean, you read the Word of God, and it's spelled out very differently in the sense that they are completely different. They're lights. They're not terra firma in the sense you can, like, land on them. I mean, these are the type of things that we've been sold a science fiction narrative. Uh, but again, I think that there's eternal uh, consequences, and it's dangerous, and it's very deceptive as far as where it will lead people, not just rejecting the Bible rejecting, um, you know, that was just a bunch of ignorant men that wrote the Bible because they don't really understand science. Uh, so therefore, what can, what can we trust in the Bible? I mean, really, what can you trust? If you can't believe that they couldn't get the sun, moon, and stars right, well, maybe a donkey didn't talk. Maybe someone didn't rise from the dead. No, these are impossible things scientifically. So everything is at stake here. It starts off very innocent, but it moves to the point where as we get older, we start looking at it. It's almost like Santa Claus. If you teach Santa Claus and then later on, you're like, oh, that was just a lie. Well, what if everything's been a lie, right? So, again, either we stand on the word of God, we stand on the truth of Scripture confidently, or we don't. And, again, this uh, this film, Scientism Exposed, will not only show that, you know, there's a lot of lies in what we've been taught, uh, scientifically even shown, but also that the spiritual agenda is there. And also you can even hear it from these big names even of today. You know, you got like even Carl Sagan or Richard Dawkins or Neil deGrasse Tyson or Lawrence Krauss. There's unbelievable clips that are put in uh, that I made sure that were in there so people could see that it was not only just an assault, it was blasphemous. I mean, there are some shocking quotes uh, that I was able to, to dig through and find that, I mean, if you just stop, after each one of those quotes, and think about what they have just said, I mean, it should be very, very clear that we're dealing in a spiritual war. And really, if you think about it, if you look around, who does the world look to as the wisest men in our entire world? It is usually these guys. These guys are paraded as knowing everything, that we need to turn to them because they have all answers, that they are seeking all answers, and one by one, they're all being found. Let them interpret our reality. Let them tell us how to live. Let them tell us what is the best way to progress as humanity. Uh, and I think we're moving into some very dangerous times. And again, Scientism Exposed also talks about where we're going in the future. So it talks about the past through dinosaurs and evolution. It talks about the massive lie within cosmology and the dangerous points uh, within that. And then it moves into where we're going in the future. Um, and yeah, there's some very, very powerful scenes. And uh, I just pray that God will open the eyes of millions of people that will be able to see this over the long haul. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to search for the truth. And they'll be able to come to realize that uh, they can trust on the only truth found in uh, Jesus Christ. 
Uh, well, Carlos has joined in with us. So now that Carlos is here, um, forgot to pray, Matthias, so we best get to that before we go any further. Right, yeah, I was thinking about that, that uh, we just did a show on prayer, and we, the prayer slipped right by us. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, Wait's better than never, especially with prayer. Um, Father God, we love you, and we praise you. Lord, we uh, want to thank you for this evening. Thank you for allowing us to come and join and talk uh, about you. Uh, Lord, spread uh, your words. And, Lord, actually, thank you for allowing Robbie to join us this evening and Carlos as well. Lord, we just pray that uh, this evening you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit. You'll lead us in conversation that will glorify your name and help others find ways to talk to people who are uh, caught up in this uh, scientism, Lord, who... The world has tricked them. They've been fooled and blinded like all of us were before we came to you. Lord, let this evening be uh, uh, um, glorifying your name, but also doing your work. Uh, Lord, let us be uh, conduits for you. We love you and we praise you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So how are you doing tonight, Carlos? Good, good. Uh, sorry for my tardiness. I literally just seen the message. <laughs> That's all right. So, so, yeah, I was like, oh, snap. Hold on. Let me see what's going on. Um, so, hey, Matthias, Kip, what's going on? Robbie, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. Uh, get a little FaceTime with you in here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. It's awesome. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I uh, pre-ordered uh, yesterday, so I was, uh, I'm pumped up to see this thing. I, I really, I uh, really appreciate it. Like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, is uh, this is my first ever release on a DVD. It's kind of been a dream uh, for a while. I'm just uh, so, so um, encouraged uh, by you know everyone's uh, support and just uh, yeah, it's just been, it's just been amazing. But I, I don't know how long it's been since there was a time when I was like, one day you know it'd be really cool to release something that could glorify God, that could expose the world's lies and put it on DVD because like we were talking before there's a certain amount of people that really you know it's hard to say hey you know here's a YouTube link go watch a two-hour film you know but you have the DVD and you can pass it around or you know and that's the that's the really encouraging thing I mean whether it's in church or getting the message out to me it was about getting it out to different audiences maybe elderly or people in the church or just handing around a DVD I mean there's been so many times that I've come across great material because someone said you got to check this out and they've handed me a DVD. So for me, it was just really important. It's been a real dream of mine just to release something. So with Scientism Exposed, I wanted to make sure that if this was my only release ever, you know, in my legacy, that I would come up with something with the caliber uh, and just wow people and also, you know, use this to truly glorify God uh, and also have a very, very powerful message where people would literally drop to their knees and say, Lord, you know, I need you. And, you know, you know, I'm so sorry for, you know, believing in the lies and just, you know, how God will just lovingly take them back instantly and just say, you know, it's OK. Um, and just like me and in my story, I was deceived for so long with scientism. You know, I had, uh, you know. I used to go around actually trying to terrorize Christians in the sense of laughing at them and thinking they were ridiculous. You believe in a stupid boat, really? That had all the animals? Come on, <laughs> smart enough. This is fairy tales, you know. So I went around laughing. I was one of those guys, and I was incredibly cynical. I mean, I got saved at the age of 21, but much of my cynicism and going around attacking Christians, and when I say attacking, I wasn't going out and physically beating them up, but I was really persecuting them verbally, emotionally. Um, in many ways, whether it was remaining abstinent, you know, that's just crazy. I mean, how can you, you know, want to wait until you're married, man? Like, this is crazy. So my mind could not wrap my head around it. But also the, you know, when it was the Genesis account, like, listen, man, they've already discovered, you know, it's millions of years. And you guys, you know, believe in this fairy tale of Genesis. So so to me, it was really important that uh, I would do something and pour all of that into um, a project where I could really kind of give back in the sense of all the lies that were exposed, you know, for me, that uh, I would be able to, you know, 
come to the light and then be able to provide that and that God could use me to uh, to bring you know this message because again I think it's really important I mean there's so many different important things I mean as truthers and as looking into the truth and you know spiritual warfare but I'm looking at you know Satan with blinding uh, the eyes of the world through scientism the untold damage that's done in education and I mean you can just walk down the street and start talking to someone and you'll see exactly how profound scientism basically Satanism scientism um, that he has got to a point where he doesn't even have to have someone believe in a religion. Um, it's one thing believing in a different belief system, new age, uh, a cult, you know, chanting, whatever. This has gone to a level where it's not a belief system, it's reality, it's fact, it's proven, it's science. So he's up to his game to the point where people believe something, not because they're believing something different than Christianity, not because they're believing something to oppose Christianity. They're believing something because it's reality. It's scientific. It is the reality of the truth. So therefore, if nobody else believes it, it doesn't really matter. They're they're fools. We have the truth. So that, to me, is the biggest danger here is because scientism is put up uh, in, you know, education, schooling, in the media. I mean, just turn on the TV. Scientists discover this. Oh, OK, well, it must be true. Anytime we hear that scientists discovered, scientists, you know, revealed that this or that. Again, there is no debate. They've already proven it. Science is truth. But again, this is the point. Science has been hijacked. Just like, you know, many churches, many different things throughout time have always been infiltrated. Well, again, this is a thing we're dealing with here, too, that there's been an infiltration uh, and it's masquerading as something that's science when all along it's been scientism and it's been very spiritual and it's an agenda. And uh, I'm just happy to be part of something that will truly expose it for what it is. Yeah, because like you said, anything that comes out on TV, people just eat it up like when that whole series came out that national geographic did about the universe and the solar system I mean, it was just utter made up nonsense i watched some of it and i would see people you know going back and forth youtube like ha oh, ha christians are so stupid didn't you watch this show and i'm like it's a bunch of cgi you're gonna sit there and believe that and i'm like I can go watch Jurassic Park. Does that mean that the dinosaurs are, you know, just like they show in there? I mean, no. It's getting to the point where they can literally show us fake movies and people take it as fact and, and as truth. That's because that's what they want. It reaffirms what they what they believe. So yeah, it's that's the that's <laughs> that's why a movie like uh, what Robbie has just you know produced is so important because to them that is fact and it's so mind-blowing to think that at one point yeah i used to think the same thing i was satisfied with seeing a beautiful cartoon you know what i mean a cgi of our universe because it looks so amazing because when you look up that's how you would imagine it so that's how they feed it to us so when we do these things and we are you know that's why the cosmology of our <laughs> of our world is so important it really is because it breaks everything else down and a, a film like this is going to be great and that's why i bought i bought a dv uh, actual hard copy is because not everyone is so hip to getting the link from their phone and watching it on their you know on their smartphone you know what i mean to be able to put it in front of somebody in the big screen your television everybody has a hc you know tv a flat screen of some sort for the most part you know that's um that's that's that we have to use these uh, uh, tools that they're using against us right back at them. So I bought one just for that very reason. So I know that I have family members that struggle with this. You know what I mean? They don't even want to hear me talk sometimes about this. It, it, it annoys them. But there might be a chance that through prayer and saying, "Hey, here's a a copy of." Um, of a of a movie that I think you would you would be interested in, maybe that might open the door. So I'm I'm hoping that um, that that's the case um, because there's nothing else out there. I mean I've made my own documentaries and I put them on YouTube, but not everybody is like I said. Not everybody's hip to YouTube, so it's good way to get the the message out there. And it might not convince everybody, but at least it might open their eyes to knowing that they're being lied to on a grand scale and that what they're being lied to is actually a religion, a cult. And uh, that's, that's I think, just as important as anything. So I'm, uh, 
hundred percent for it, man. I'm glad that you put uh, this content out, and um, I'm definitely supporting you one hundred percent. Yeah, what's really funny is you know we see how right away people will say, "Well, so you're against science?" Then and it's like, "No, I love science. Science is fun, and I especially love you know biblical science, as I like to call it." I mean, just because we disagree with what some of the scientists say doesn't mean that we're against science. Yeah, there's so many arguments where they come up when they tell you, well, how do you have this computer? What do you think? It's like, no, we're not talking about, you know, the, the, the actual science, science that gives produces something. We're talking about stuff that they're making up. Exactly. There's a difference and people cannot... Um, split the two in, 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 in different categories that just think that, uh, oh, your processor on your computer, who made that? That's science. I know that. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not an idiot to that. I know that. But it's at the same time, you're confusing that with some pictures that they're showing you, telling you that they've discovered 200 more planets and they're not giving you any proof of it. They're just telling you that. It's just ridiculous. Well, and as, as we keep going, it seems they keep getting stuff that's farther and farther out in the solar system that no one else can prove because they're the scientists, right? They have the equipment, so we must, we have to believe them because they have all that really expensive stuff and they got the chalkboards behind them with all the equations and the big long numbers, so it's got to be right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sad at this point. Well, like, I mean, not to not to get political or anything, but it might be interesting uh, with uh, the change of tide now because I don't know if anyone really knows when it comes to uh, um, Trump. But I mean, he would laugh off climate change. I mean, and anyone that really seriously looking into global warming or climate change and understanding uh, the monetary, the financial. Uh, just the deception and why um, it's very, very evident. But again, it might be interesting now that uh, thing would be moving in a little bit of a different direction, you know, with Clinton and all that and Obama. It was all like, oh, we all got to do carbon tax, save the Mother Earth. And again, we got another Gaia, you know, worship thing going on here with like, you know, save Mother Earth. Mother Earth is important. Therefore, we all have to do our job and come together. But scientifically, we've discovered this. But then it goes back to like Earth back to Gaia worship and so again there's a real spiritual element here um, so when you start looking into these things but that's the problem the minute you start debating these type of things you're a fool it's like you know like you're a moron I mean there is no debate there is no discussion here and that's when you have to be really careful is when all of a sudden people are just shutting you down because you're an idiot uh, in the same way when you're just labeled a bigot or a racist or intolerant uh, this is their mechanism just shutting someone down so they don't actually have to have this discussion but usually I would I would say that when you're in discussion or you see this happening usually there's something to it because they're instantly wanting to shut down the conversation and they've done a very effective job you know doing this but I mean you can get into so many things and I don't really touch on a lot in global warming I have uh, on my channel celebrate truth I've got a, uh, a, a short documentary film I did on uh, the global warming climate change uh, lie um, that is on my channel celebrate truth on YouTube uh, I've got one on the alien deception we can talk more about that I have one called the global lie so I have done other pieces of work on celebrate truth um, but again it's like one of those things where you start looking into it whether it's vaccinations you know that debate is raging along but again is the science settled is it 100% proven that all vaccinations are good and no there's no link to autism with the MMR vaccine vaccine so these are the type of things. And again, scientism exposed. I mean, I could do a, you know, 15 hour film if I was to include everything in there. So, I mean, obviously I had to condense this, you know, under two hours, getting kind of a central theme, really showing people the agenda. But what I hope it will do for many people is that questions will be raised and people will see certain something in there that God will speak to them and going, you know what? I want to look into that a little bit more. You know, they brought up a good point about this. I want to look into that. They brought up a good point about the science is settled in this matter. But, you know, so to me, it was all about not throwing in their face. This is true. You know, this is what to believe. It was almost like, really? Do you really believe that? It's almost like, do you believe in billions or do you believe in the Bible? Because billions involves billions of years ago or billions of light years away. Notice how there's a parallel with their incredible numbers, you know. So they teach us dinosaurs and evolutions with, you know, millions and billions of years ago. Um, and again, look at the children. The fascinating thing about this is you kind of see a draw. Children are fascinated. It moves right into adulthood, but really dinosaurs. I mean, what child doesn't think they're just 
intense and cool and fun. And as we continue on, we really, you know, have this draw to dinosaurs. But I find that dinosaurs, in one way, tells us the story of the past, which destroys the Bible, therefore great. Moving into the future, we've got space. I mean, every kid. I mean, how many, uh, how many, uh, you know, boys, girls wanted to be astronauts or, you know, just fascinated. I mean, Star Wars, Star Trek. I mean, we got the whole space, you know, the science fiction narrative going on. And we've really been indoctrinated in this whole space idea that we can travel through galaxies and planets. I mean, we're told that there's like trillions and trillions of galaxies, not just, you know, stars or planets. Galaxies. Um, and these numbers are absolutely insane. They're hard to wrap your head around. So you know, look at, you know, invoking the imaginations of children as we get older. We're fascinated by this. But all along through this entire narrative, it destroys everything that the Bible has to say. Try to find a heliocentric Big Bang cosmology, biblically speaking. Try. You can't. So you, uh, people can come and attack you and say, oh, well, the Bible this, the Bible that. But it's like, where does it say that in the Bible? So we have to look at that. And we've moved away so far away, whether it's being politically correct in one way when it comes to, you know, what we say, we're careful because people might call us a bigot or a racist or whatever. Like, it's just unbelievable how, how timid and shy as Christians we've got. Our voice has been diminished. And in the same way with scientism. We dare say something that's foolish. We dare say something that has already been proven fact. So that's the thing. I think we can be bold. I think that we can sit there and stand on the word of God and we say, no, God said it. And I mean, I like some people's confidence. I mean, a good uh, friend of mine, Kevin Johnston, also actually, in, um, he'll sit there and say that, you know, if the Bible said that blue was green, you know, I'm going to say that Crayola got it wrong. So we need to have the confidence that really if the Bible is saying something, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what everyone has said. You know, like, do we actually have the confidence that the entire world was saying blue is green, but the Bible said otherwise, that we would stand on that? Um, and I think right through the Bible, it's echoed over and over and over again, especially with creation. You know, if there was one verse, maybe, but like uh, Kip had read before, you know, talking about the waters. The waters are mentioned even after the flood. Waters above the firmament. Of water above their heads. Um, the very fact is, does the Bible or does God say that water exists above us? Yes, he does. Scientism has told us no. Who are we going to believe? It doesn't matter what NASA says. It doesn't matter what they say. They've proven it scientifically. So why are we even like holding when nothing has been scientifically proven? Because they have a degree. But again, if we're going to get back to science, if we're going to get back to empirical experimentation, don't just give us theories, give us something that's truly scientific, and then maybe we might have a discussion. But just like evolution, just like Big Bang cosmology, just like black holes, dark energy, dark matter, I mean, all this kind of stuff is just theoretical. It's just like exposed in the film. I got uh, Brian Mullen. I don't know if anyone, uh, I'm sure people are with Brian Mullen's work. He has balls up. I have been very, very supportive. He I mean, is a big, big part in the film. And brings a lot of because I mean, he's a structural engineer. He's got physics background. He's got even some um, astronomy uh, type of uh, schooling in there. And him coming brings a credibility because again it's not just someone coming realm. So him yeah, to the your, Bible your I say like right back to the Bible. You're really breaking up pretty bad. I, I I'm breaking up? Yeah, a lot of people in the chat room said that you're roboting out. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. I'll just wrap it up. But yeah, I mean Brian uh, has been very instrumental in bringing a lot of incredible uh, knowledge to the table and exposing scientism. Okay, now you're normal again. Yeah, it seems every time we start getting into valid points or something like that, we start having issues. <laughs> it seems to happen every show now. Yeah, because now you're breaking up. <laughs> now I'm breaking up too? <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't know what is wrong. Satan doesn't like scientism exposed. No, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. Thanks, yeah. what's up, man? You made what's up, what's up? A, you made a very valid point there, Robbie, about the vaccines. You know, here we have science, and I, I finally got to watch Vaxxed, and when I watched that documentary, 
I was just blown away. I mean, that was the most saddest documentary I ever watched, just the fact that here we have science that they had. They knew that those vaccines caused autism, and it was all just brushed under the rug. So here we have people yelling, you know, science will save us, and science this and science that. And I'm like, yet we hide the good science when we know something is being done that's harmful or negligent to children. I mean, I, that's what really boggles my mind, is how they pick and choose what they want to do with their science. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the stuff comes down to, like, big pharma. It comes down to a lot of money is being exchanged. There's a lot of power going on. Um, and, and we can just follow. I mean, like they say, with more, more, more um, when it comes to cosmology, the question is, well, what would be the motivation there? You know, because again, they're really you don't really follow the money, but that's where we get into a spiritual agenda, where the whole idea would be destroy the true creator uh, from creation in the sense that people cannot see. And I mean, look at Romans, Romans one, uh, and you just look throughout the Bible where God made it so easy to see creation that He exists. So, what if an agenda was to make it very complex that maybe it was very easy that we see with our senses? It was there all. And yet science made it so complex that all of a sudden it was fuzzy, that we couldn't quite see it anymore. We couldn't quite comprehend it. Therefore, when we're talking in millions and billions, how does God fit into that? Well, where really is God? You know, is he outside of time and space? And is he outside of like the 10 trillion galaxies? Like where, where is he? I mean, we can come down to a very fundamental question and it's profound. And I don't think we'll ever know. But really, where is God? What the Bible would say, though, is God is up. I mean, it, it's it, you can look, look at like, where is God? He's up. I mean, most people will believe like if you say well, where's hell, and people point down or whatever. But what I'm saying is directionally, space has blurred it. Where the sense is there is no up and down in space. Space itself is is almost very suspect in the sense that it's black, it's void, it's dark, it's nothing. I mean, these are the adjectives that are describing something. Does this sound like such? would create that would that would you know have all of the hosts and all the luminaries in, in adjectives that are nothing a vacuum i mean it really, doesn't even make sense but really awesome about that i watched some of the old nasa test videos where they built a chamber this big spherical chamber to simulate the vacuum of space and what's interesting is they put a man in there and no more than they started to decompress the chamber the, the astronaut training in there literally fell, went into a seizure and fell backwards because his blood and his saliva in his mouth started to boil. Because if you take a small vacuum chamber and put a glass of water in it and start sucking the air out, that water will literally start to boil. So tell me again, how can astronauts be out in space in a vacuum when no living creature can survive in that atmosphere? Oh yeah, I mean they can't even they can't even actually 100% replicate space. So yeah, how did they know and go up there with no problems? I mean we can get into scientism exposed even goes into a little bit of the moon landing because I think the moon landing is very very fundamental here. Now uh, you'll find that most people that you know debate or kind of question the moon landing or think they're open to you know looking into <clears throat> looking into other things, but really it comes down to well they landed on the moon in the 60s. They have it all figured out. The question is, did they really land on the moon? And I mean, this could be a whole other discussion, but I think it's paramount when we're talking about space. Uh, you've got clips in Scientism Exposed, and you've got people saying that they have a hard time. They have not yet been out of Earth's low orbit. So well, what is it? I mean, if you actually look this up, which I found startling, and it's actually in the film, but uh, if you look this up, since the 1960s, the furthest that man has traveled in space, man, you know, man in a craft, is like four to 500 miles. Well, in the 60s, they went 240,000 miles. It is a fraction of a percent. In the last 50 years, they have gone even not even a one, like 10% of the distance of what they went in the 60s. Now, you're telling me that they went something that had less technology than an iPhone 3? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have more technology right now, sitting here right now, than the Apollo had right now. Just, just this, this discussion right now, Skype or on YouTube, there's more technology going on right now than the Apollo. I mean, stop and think about that. It went to the moon and back, you know, six times, 12 times <laughs> if you count there and back. So we have a real big problem here. And that's why people should really critically look at it and people say, well, the moon landing, that's so big. Of course they landed on the moon. But the question is, what if they didn't? And just hypothetically, if you start thinking of that, 
you know, if they haven't, well, where have they been? Where can they go? Because if you look around, everyone right now that's sitting here in 2016, 2017, go look at the ISS. Where is it? It's not even remotely close to there. You know, look at the Orion project where they're saying, well, we can't pass through the, uh, you know. And that's the their belt. own that's, words. They said they can't pass through the Van Allen belt. Yes. The Van Allen radiation belts. We got to we put all this technology, you know, to be able to go through there. You've got them admitting uh, astronauts admitting with NASA saying that we're developing all the technology with the ISS and we're gathering data so one day we can go off to the moon, Mars, and the rest of the, the planets. Well, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. You went to the moon, no problem, in 1960. There, you know, what, what's what's the problem? You should you should have a hotel. And you should be taking, you know, trips. We should be like going to the moon. Hey, where are you going this weekend? I'm going to go to the moon. I'm going to hang out there for a little bit, you know, come back. And then I'm going to go to Hawaii for a little bit. You know, like we should literally be able to be going to the moon and back in 50 years. It should be a piece yeah, of cake, but it's not. All the talks they had of, oh, they were going to build bases on the moon. They were going to start growing plants and have like a colony up there. And it's like, we have the technology. Why isn't it being done then? Well, yeah, and it was interesting too. This was a while back. I was just curious. I, I was always a fan of Independence Day. I've done I've done a film on the alien deception, and I've always been intrigued how Hollywood is is bringing the alien deception, you know, to us through making them more friendly. They're here to help us, to unite us. They're our friends. You got Transformers that are coming to help us from this coming invasion. Um, so I've always been fascinated. The new Independence Day. I was like, oh, I have to check this out. But again, you know, what do you see? You see a moon base where they're monitoring you know anything hostile whatever and if you look at it they're like sitting there they're mining on the moon they've got a whole they've got a whole base there they got vehicles and i'm like in there i'm just watching this they're talking on the earth from the moon no problem you know their their cell i guess their cell reception is really good then you know in hollywood i mean we have a hard time you know just across our city without our cell phones cutting off but yet they can make a phone call in the 60s to nixon in the white house and talk from the moon uh, hey uh, nixon how you doing we're about to play golf and drive a rover around you know, we're proud of you. All of America is proud of you. And it's like we couldn't even do it right now with our technology. Yet, you know, we're supposed to believe. And then get 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 this, guys. Like you got the you got the rover on Mars. And again, we touch a little bit on this in Scientism Exposed. But really, think of these pictures. They're beaming pictures back over a million miles away. What kind of Wi-Fi can send a JPEG images of the moon? You know, in like a minute. I mean, what kind of, you know, is this a T5000 uh, line they're running? I mean, what kind of technology run the wireless signal to send pictures back to the Earth? Well, and of course, the best one was yeah. uh, when they controlled the camera. Yeah. When they took back off. Exactly. I'm like, who took the picture there? Who, who stayed on the moon and sacrificed themselves to take that video? No, exactly. And again, because it's so big, that's why people will not believe that it's a lie. Because again, it's just big. It's too big. It's so large that it's almost absurd to even question it. But again, this is what we're doing. We're questioning these things. But that's why I'm saying that the moon is so significant. Um, and you'll see a couple clips that will really make people think when they see um, stuff presented in scientism exposed and yeah i'm just i'm really excited to get this out because again a lot of people and in investigations we were doing i wanted something you know it was more about let's just get people it was almost like hmm maybe there's a deception let them do the google search let them go on their journey you know discovering you know, truth but again, for me it was like i it was to come out with something that really just started showing, you know, Christians, non-Christians, that truly the spiritual agenda. And one, there are major problems. This that they're saying is proven and true. Uh, just like the moon landing, and the moon is important. It's very, very important. Yeah, I mean, look what we're experiencing right now. You know, we're having trouble with the Skype with your call, and you're kind of roboting out, but yet we can have perfect transmissions, you know, from the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, but what's even more crazy is he's not roboting on my end at all. Carlos, uh, is he on you? I'm here perfectly fine. It's it, it has to be YouTube. Well, you know what? Are you muting? Are you muting on? Well, you have headphones on. But, uh, I'm muting when I'm not talking, so I don't know if that helps or not. 
but um, I don't think so because it's still just a, you're listening to the sound. And plus, yeah, whenever I do, I'm not really necessarily even mute. I'm just turning off my, um, or turning down my mic. Yeah, it's got to be YouTube then because everything yeah. is working fine on my end. So I don't like I said, yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing everybody perfect. So if it is going on, it's definitely um, YouTube. So most likely in the, um, the replay of this, uh, everything would be worked out so it stinks that you, we're having this problem um but if you guys watch the replay it should it should be perfectly fine yeah because we're hearing him just fine yeah i've noticed that when the streams end and then the videos upload to youtube then all the glitches are gone so that's kind of weird how that works but Tapping in on us. <laughs> um, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna ask you how much uh, BS or crap did you have to go through to find uh, that you found? Like, you know, you found some real gems, but did you have to watch like all of their uh, presentations in order to catch it, or were you blessed with people? A lot of them, you know sending you like oh i saw this yeah people how, how were definitely much... helping out and sending stuff but I, I definitely had to go through you know hours and hours of stuff not to mention that you know all the the wonderful great uh interview footage from you know kevin johnston and brian mullen and richard hopkins and um daniel johnson um going through it and making sure you know what gets put in you know how are we going to structure all this so again it's a lot of work putting together a two-hour documentary film and making sure that you succinctly you know put it all together and i just wanted to make sure that there was enough information to maybe shock people to get people questioning so that they would you know, start doing their search for truth and saying this is an important topic i really want to find out and hopefully many many people will come back and saying wow you know lord you know forgive me for going away you know for believing in this that it was just fact and it was truth and that you know i can you know once i've looked into these things and i've seen it you know that i just i was believing a lot i was believing something that was just like a picture from nasa changed my whole outlook on the bible just because nasa took a picture and showed it to me i lost all my trust in the bible i mean to me that's it's sad so for god to you know be able to put some people together to use me in this way store and to be able to show people there truly is an agenda and bring people into a right relationship and a right understanding of his blast and I'm so excited for the world to see this in days away now but like I said it's hard to even contain it because uh, it's just I'm very very happy and I know God's going to do some amazing things uh, I'm really excited right no um, and I, not to boast to on you. your editing skills are quite awesome, dude. I uh, I must comment on on how well you put everything together in your uh, trailer. So I can only imagine what your what your movie looks like or your documentary. So well, like I said, I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that if this was my only DVD film that I ever put this was ever going to be played in a the theater or it was going to be on Netflix in the future or whatever God intended for it, that it was something that I would be happy with at my skill level. Because as I continue, you know, in on what I do, I'll just constantly, you know, improve, hopefully. But again, for me, you know, I've had no training in this. I've just, you know, had a passion and I would love to, you know, continue doing this. I plan to. Um, so I'm just excited for all of the support and people that are behind the ministry. And as I continue on, I just want to put out stuff that really will uh, be heard, that will uh, the gospel of Jesus and will expose the world's lies to me. This is uh, my calling, and it's important to do it through media and through film. So, you know, I hopefully that uh, God willing that one day we'll uh, be able to, to see and God will glorify. Yeah, it's YouTube. They're messing with the stream again because we've actually been in and out here several times according to my analytics here. That's 
Yeah, every time we get on these types of subject lines, all of a sudden we have these mysterious stream problems when other people don't have any issues. And it's even more retarded because I'm paying for this out of my own pocket and having <laughs> problems. Uh, I'll say this. Um, you guys noticed that within the last months, or at least eight months or so, you can even round out to a, a full year, but they've really jumped in uh, producing as much space crap as they can. Like it's, it seems like it's everywhere. It feels like you know when you buy a, a new car or just a car in general. Now all of a sudden you see it everywhere. It seems like ever since I I, I came into the um, the truth of the flat earth, um, it just feels like all of a sudden NASA is just trying to ramp up all the production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just reminds me of that old scam back in the day. You know when they were selling parcels of land on the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's it's getting pretty obviously um obviously we're making a, a impact, you know, everybody who's going to this is definitely put out material one way or another and um it's affecting a lot of people so they're definitely having to ramp up all their stuff cuz I'm seeing it everywhere. I What was the name of that place? Oh, man, it was a... Uh, I don't know. He had a kid's meal. And the cup... <laughs> the cup was a space cup. And it said on the bottom something like, um, do you guys... Are you... Would you rather be in space or uh, in the water? It was weird. Like, it had astronauts. It had, had a space shuttle. It had the planets and stars. It's like, why are they going through such great length? If this isn't if if this was just a psyop, you know, because you hear that all the time. Oh, flat Earth psyop from people who have no clue. They look into nothing, or they typed in it's flat Earth uh, fake, and they have some fake video out there trying to tell them, explain them all the stuff that's um, why it's supposed to be fake, even though you no, know, these are just disinformation agents, um, which I come across a lot lately. So yeah, man, I'm just noticing that there's a lot. Of big stuff happening I'm, uh, that, I'm gonna make a video on that myself just talking about how many movies this year alone have been including in some sort of space aspect uh even cartoons that are being That's another thing that we touched on in uh, the uh, is uh, desperately trying to find light on Mars or somewhere. In, and again, say, what do you think the church or what are Christians going to do? They scientifically prove through NASA and through science that life has been discovered and, you know, it exists. And not only does it exist, it exists. How many people are going to start to rewrite the Bible? Where do you find alien life in the Bible? And I think that we're headed towards a very big deception in the sense that uh, this is kind of part of the whole structure. And this will help solve the missing link, you know, with evolution, that it was this intelligent life form that, you know, kind of transhuman, sorry, that not transhumanism, the uh, um, transvermia in the sense of getting into, uh, you know, at one point they planted their DNA in a monkey. But it, this will explain the whole missing link with their evolution. Whether it's biological science or it's getting into the spiritual nature of we're evolving spiritually, one consciousness and becoming one with the universe. And so these things are touched on uh, in the film. But again, the whole alien agenda is, is part of it as well. Um, you need to explain a lot of things that are still missing, even though most people do these things to be scientifically proved. But Problems will be filled in the sense that uh, the answers will be given. Um, look at Hollywood. Most of uh, Hollywood is showing that it is these helpers, almost like you know, you're getting in now to the fallen angels. But really, um, it is these helpers that come to help us to solve problems for us. And I've always gone so far as to say, like, wouldn't it be interesting if all of a sudden we didn't make contact with the blood 
really <laughs> wonderful but then they warn us of this basically evil alien bold like force that's coming to the uh, really and really in the sense of trying uh, to literally fight against yahweh and really the deception scientific worldview in the fact of uh, ultimate universe in a hostile yeah, don't worry we're going to band together we're going to stick with you we're going to fight this alien force that's coming and I, I'm starting to believe more and more that the great deception possibly could entail a scientific world and this is that really 100% get on board with something is believing through scientists, the scientists are a big part of this. It's like I've been seeing how throughout time, um, this has been put together in a very long, you know, plan throughout history. And again, the question is why? Why? Why through science? Why through the scientists? And again, if it continues on through the future to where they're taking us to also space in the sense of discovering life, once life does, gets discovered, things are really likely going to change. And I think that many, many more people are going to fall away from the literalism of the Bible because you can't fit that into uh, the ridiculous how does that work? Jesus said he came one and one for all. Um, you, you, know, if, as, you know, there's a lot of problems. And it muddies the water. I mean, it's life. But until then, Like science discovers that, no problem. Let's just put that into the Bible. Oh, evolution! Yeah, that works. So they're constantly putting these things in the Bible that will constantly kind of work, but they'll get to a point where not, it won't work anymore, and that's when they'll completely revolt against the Bible, which is unfortunate. But I think that we're headed towards that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, no, go ahead, Carlos. No, I was just saying I agree with him. Mm, okay. Yeah, another thing, you know, when I watched that Vax documentary, another thing that came through my mind is, you know, what if the mark of the beast is this technology that's able to, you know, prolong life and cure all sicknesses and disease? How many parents would rush to get a chip like that on their autistic child if it cured autism? Without even thinking, you know, you know people would do that. We do. If science... If science and yeah um but now i started to see um, the whole uh climate change or i think it's already out a lot of people jumping on board and um I, the funny thing is i heard them talking about um how they're mad at at Donald Trump because he doesn't <laughs> buy it. <laughs> They're like, how could he be so ignorant? He could just have to watch um, watch Leonardo's film, and it's like, guys, you guys really don't get it. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's interesting. And again, like <clears throat> I, I had mentioned before, I didn't want to get like super political, but I just want to say because me as a truther looking into the whole narrative of what's going on, even currently, <clears throat> what I find very intriguing. If if Trump is a big play and, you know, it's a big deception, you know, this is really, really huge. But what I'm saying is everything that the New World Order, everything that the satanic agenda is all about pushing and getting humanity to unite on, Trump one by one has completely gone against every one of these things. So either this is something that's so crafty that I, it's beyond even me or something is going on that we really need to pay attention to and not just jump on something instantly because we see a hand signal or something. Don't get me wrong. He could be evil and from Satan and he's part of the whole New World Order. Sure. Uh, it's too early. Like I said, I'm going to sit back and watch this whole thing unfold. But as I know right now, he is ruffling feathers with everything that y you guys, all these guys that are on this panel right now and talking. We've all talked about these complete cancers of society, whether it's scientism. Trump has completely laughed at climate change, and global warming. He has come against the scientific establishment. He's come against the media establishment. He's come against the big banksters, the Federal Reserve, the UN. So I'm just saying... It'll be interesting to step back and see what's going on because some of the things that he is going against, um, it's it's puzzling. It's it's really cool to see that there's going to be a bit of a, a break for a little bit. But just that one topic alone, climate change, 
you know, not, he's already going to elect someone on the board of saying, no, we're not putting money towards this nonsense. I don't even believe it's real. It's not even a real problem. So because if it was Clinton or Obama, they'd be pouring millions of tax dollars. Uh, where I am in Canada in the new year, we're going to be charged a carbon tax and everyone's bill is going up significantly. Like I looked in the figures and I'm like, whoa, like it's significant. And I mean, nobody has a choice of this. But again, we all have to do our part to save Mother Earth. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't even think this is even real. Yet we all are being forced. And again, the UN agenda. And if you look at the upper echelon of the elites, they want every citizen of the world paying carbon tax. So when you have someone that's completely going against the new world order in the sense, you just have to st step back and going, OK, this is this is going to get a little interesting. And, you know, there's a lot of things saying, oh, he might get assassinated or he's all part of the deception or. But I'm just saying a lot of the stuff that I expose and the stuff that I've looked into, I just find it fascinating that we're seeing someone going against the very nature of the things that they want to, you know, continue on going forward. But again, we were talking before about climate change and I'd seen the, I went to uh, the, one of the premieres of my city for Vaxxed. And if anyone sees that, I mean, it just angers you. It saddens you. Uh, it, you go through all the various emotions. But again, I probably at some point will put out a film on the vaccination uh, controversy on that whole uh, industry because it is tragic what people are doing. And again, they're doing it wholeheartedly in the sense that, no, this I, I'm doing this to protect my child. And yet they're doing that on the trust of what scientism, what the medical industry, what everyone has kind of told them, you know, you have to do or it's good for you. And yet we are, I mean, the data is proving otherwise. So again, this just runs around everything. I mean, um, like I said, Scientism Exposed could be a 15 hour film if I was to hit every single area. But for now, let's just focus in on, um, you know, what it entails that there has been an exception. And I think when it comes to the cosmology with NASA, with all their findings um, and all the stuff that they're releasing, and I'll just throw out a picture that looks like my, you know, my daughter drew and people will be like, oh, my goodness, that's so real. <laughs> it's like it's not real, you know. So we need to get like serious and look and say what's what's really going on. And when you have really smart people in the world even coming against some things like climate change and saying, well, wait a minute, do you know, I don't know if people know this, but the person that started the Weather Channel. Uh, the meteorologist or whatever, 100 percent denies climate change. I mean, I think there was a list out there of 10,000 scientists, uh, people with different backgrounds and degrees of real science uh, that were openly doing an open letter to debate and saying, no, we don't believe that man-made climate change is really real. And these were meteorologists. These were every type of you know, sector. So, again, when we're talking about the deceptions in science, I'm not saying that everyone in science is evil. We're just saying that if they're going along with the narrative, and any other information that comes out that wrecks their narrative, you'll see in the film that they'll get expelled, they will get laughed at, they'll get ridiculed, they will get shut down because they know that there is something a lot bigger going on. And there is, there's, I mean, eternity and souls are at stake with this entire, um, you know, narrative of we evolved from apes and dinosaurs. And as kids play with these innocent little dinosaurs and they think it's all fun and great, Instantly in their mind, it is destroying the biblical account of creation. So, I mean, unless, you know, people are letting them know that, you know, their narrative, I'm not saying it's evil to let your kids play with dinosaurs, but just understand that really Satan always goes after the children. And uh, the, the generation, the youth are so incredibly important. And uh, it's great what uh, we kept doing with uh, the children's ministry. And I'm totally 100 percent behind that because I just believe that giving proper education and biblical good stuff to children is so important because I mean, my wife and I will turn on the TV. And I mean, there'll be we just had a, a baby girl. She actually just turned one a couple of weeks ago. But for babies, they will have space shows. They will have stuff like Baba Black Sheep yeah. and they're running around in UFOs. And I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. What does Baba Black Sheep, have you any wool, have anything to do with running around a spaceship and meeting aliens? So I'm like, that doesn't even go. I mean, I understand if the song was like riding around a UFO, going around, you know, like, that makes sense. Okay, oh. I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, but this is Baba Black Sheep, okay? This is, we're, we're getting into a territory where we're going to do row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And they're going to be going down a black hole in the universe. I mean, some of this <laughs> stuff is silly. It's silly. And you have to look at it and say, that doesn't even make sense. Why would someone want to put someone in a spaceship, a baby, no less, meeting aliens for bad, bad black sheep? But this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an assault on the youth right from an early age looking up in the crib, the solar system. The heliocentric Big Bang cosmology is taught to babies when they're looking up in the crib. Think about that. I mean, they don't even have a chance 
their worldview is being formed the minute they're born. And again, yeah, we need to look at this a seriously. Good point there. What are those things called that they hang above? Mobiles. The crib? Yeah, mobiles. That's right. Mobiles. Yeah. yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yes. Yes. It's in there. It's in the film. You'll, you'll see that little little nugget in there. How that's all connected. Wow. Yeah, I mean that's that's their goal. Their their goal is to target them young, and. That's what you and I have been talking about this week. That it's why it's, I am so fueled and so excited to start, you know, producing and making these these kids shows, because that's what we really should be focusing on is our youth and getting their minds full of the gospel of Christ and God's word, so that they can better discern when they get older. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I go into that in the film uh, as far as like worldviews being formed at a very early age. And I just think that we have to make sure that we're careful. I mean, the Bible says, you know, meditate, you know, watch mindful, be mindful on what you see, you know, protect your eyes and your ears and all these sort of things. But I think when it comes to impressionable, like, you know, youth, when it comes to babies, when it comes to infants, I think we have to be really careful, you know, with what we're what we're doing, uh, even when we think it's innocent. Um you know, some of these things are really shaping their worldview and they might come back and, uh, you know, bite us uh, down the road because, again, you know, we might see them as, oh, there's nothing major going on here. But there's something really big going on. I mean, the heliocentric universe, the fact that basically all the planets, the sun is still, the Earth is orbiting the sun. I mean, who debates that? I mean, that's just fact. Is it not? Right. Well, what's interesting is there's not one scientific experiment to prove the movement of the Earth. Not one. Not one. I mean, people can look this up. Look at all the experiments that tried to prove the movement of the Earth, whether it spins, it moves, it wobbles, it does anything. They all failed. So, again, it's been a very big disaster for science when they've applied the scientific method and nothing can validate the movement. You know, you would think of traveling at what? A thousand, we're, we're, we're traveling at insane speeds. We're spinning at like a thousand miles at the equator. You would think that we'd have something in place that we could detect this movement. Nothing. What does the Bible say? The Bible says we're fixed. We're movable. You know, um, it says that everything revolves around us. And again, the, the film, Scientism Exposed, will actually start showing you throughout history the assault on that and how in order to get to where we are today, they had to start removing things one by one. And one of them was, I think it was Nietzsche that quoted, said we killed God when we removed the earth from the sun in the sense that we basically made the earth move instead so, again, there are things in place. It's very craftily put together in the sense that one by one, you just need to start destroying the foundation. And in order to chip away the foundation, you start basically hitting the heart of it. And, yep, one by one, look in the Bible. Take the Bible, literally, look at science, and then ask yourself the question, why are these completely 100% opposite? Something's going on here. Because you'd think some of those things would align. Some of the things would just be common sense. But, nope, one by one, even coming down to the sun and the moon. You know, we, what we've been taught about that, you know, God says there are two lights. Well, you know, we've been taught it's just a reflecting the sunlight. Well, one by one, these are the questions that the, the, the film proposes. Really? Maybe you should go and research this and find out truly. Are you willing to base your entire eternity, your entire belief system on the fact of a picture that NASA gave you or that somebody 500 year, years ago told you? Most of science is just because people believing what someone before them said. They haven't even done the data. They just believe their professors. The professors believe their professors, and away back we go. So, again, with scientism exposed, hopefully everyone, like I said, it releases in less than 10 days now. Um, you know, share it. Get the word out. Buy a DVD if you want. Share the YouTube video. Any which way, whatever you want to do, just do it. Get the word out because, again, this is put into a format that I think most people will start really questioning the world. And these are the people that really, maybe if you hit them with something really strong, like the earth is flat or we're in a dome, they'll just completely shut you down. This film doesn't get into stuff that strong, but it seriously gets them questioning, maybe there is some truth to what the Bible is saying and that science or what science has taught me might not be fully true. So I wanted to create something in the sense of being able to get it into a lot more people's hands, a lot more people would open it up. And if I called it, you know, flat earth revealed, you know, People would just shut down and say it's silly. I'm not even going to look at it. And again, it is not a flat earth documentary film. Just to let everyone know, it's not. Uh, it doesn't even mention that. But it definitely gets into the nature of the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, evolution, dinosaurs. It gets into all of these things. 
And for anyone that really does know the truth of the origins of the shape of the earth or just knowing the lies of scientism will be able to understand exactly why and how the film was put together and the reach that it's going to have and especially conveying the gospel of Jesus. That's right. And right, we should there. actually What's that? I was about to say we should actually watch the trailer pretty pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, so I was just gonna say now we're going on an hour fifteen. I'm gonna play the trailer here one more time. Uh, for those that have just tuned on since we began. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We will restore science to its rightful place and wield technology's wonders. Ignorant just me simply means you don't know. But if you don't know and you have the power of influence over others, that's dangerous. If you don't know and you don't know that you don't know, that is particularly dangerous. There is no debate. Climate change is a fact. Now, as for getting your morals from the Bible, I very sincerely hope nobody does. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system. That Jesus is the Son of God who is redeeming humanity from original sin. The idea that we are born in sin and the only way we can be redeemed from sin is through the death of Jesus. I mean, that's a horrible idea. Megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about the, the recent push to implement intelligent design in school curriculums? That's, it's very dangerous. bad. It's dangerous. very dangerous. dangerous. That's a, you don't mess with, with, with the church. You can see an agenda. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. I just love that part that you put on the end there with Mr. Bill Nye. The Earth is a closed system. I mean, come on. How much more obvious do you need to get? Yeah, there's uh, like I said, there's a lot of gems in the uh, in the film, a lot of uh, research and just some shocking quotes of uh, what they're saying, even in their own in their own uh, voices. So that's the that's the really cool thing is sometimes when you start digging through these things, you can see them slip up. You can see the truth actually come out. And um, that's what scientism exposed kind of goes through as well. Uh, is that uh, there's inconsistencies, the very fact that they really can't get out of low Earth orbit, and no one can. And, I mean, uh, there was a video that just surfaced here recently about Neil deGrasse Tyson also admitting that we can only go to low Earth or orbit. Well, I'll tell you, technology really then hasn't advanced very much because in a tin can you can get to the moon there and back in the 60s. I mean, mm. people, seriously, look up the Apollo. That thing looks like, you know, tin foil, and it looks like a craft project that someone did in homeschooling or something. It looks ridiculous. And yet they went to the moon and back. I mean, think about it logically. I mean, look at the construction of it. <laughs> I mean, oh, if you want a good laugh, if you're feeling down, <laughs> yeah, if you're feeling down, you want a good laugh, just throw up that picture of the Apollo and just everyone just laugh at it. It is ridiculous. It is, it is something that probably would have a hard time flying 50 miles let alone 240, you know, like the whole idea of just going to the moon and landing with that technology is problematic. But again, the world believes it's 100% true. They've never been back. And I go so far saying this, and not, you can put me on record all you want, but they never will. And if they ever do, it will be a place they'll never be able to see. And that's why they're planning to go to Mars. They're planning to go to further off so that we can't actually detect it because our technology is caught up to the moon. Every one of us can grab a telescope or even a P900 camera, zoom in on the moon so we could verify if they were there. So that's why they're, they're wanting to go off elsewhere. Uh, and it's never going to happen anyways. And when it does, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a lot of inconsistencies there, but, uh, I don't believe that we were meant to, I don't believe biblically you can find anywhere. There's actually a verse, I think it's in Isaiah where it says the earth I have given to man, but the heavens are mine declares That's the Lord. Right. So that verse alone should tell everyone, wait a minute, God gave the earth, you know, and the earth's like, you know, gave him dominion to man, but the heavens are the Lord's would God even allow them? You know, so again, this gets into the whole idea that maybe they can only go so far, the firmament. I mean, these are all the things to really start researching. But 
scripturally try to find this idea where we can venture off into the luminaries and travel and land on the moon, land on these lights that God made, you know? I mean, you just can't find it. You can't find a heliocentric Big Bang universe, biblically speaking. Um, all these things that basically people want to fight against, especially as Christians, it's time to come back, believe God for what he said it was, and rather than butting it up with the lies of scientism, just rest on the truth of God's word. I mean, it's so incredibly simple. Just like, uh, you know, Joshua, I mean, they commanded the sun and the moon to stop. What's so prob problematic about that? But no, science t told you that that's impossible. Therefore, you're going to have to believe that, you know, really he commanded, they, he commanded the earth to stop. Well, if it's spinning at a thousand miles an hour, I mean, how long does it take for the earth to come to a stop, period? But again, when you're getting into all these things, it just becomes a distortion. <laughs> It clearly shows that the sun and the moon move, that they were created for the earth. The earth is special. It is the center. We've been taught we're just a dot in an infinite universe. We have no purpose. We're just an accident of a big bang. So you tell me, do you want to put all your faith in scientism? Or you want to put your faith in the Bible and God, right? And then, you know, that's the biggest point to push with people. It's like, what's more important, God's word or the word of men? Because the Bible warns yeah. thoroughly over and over and over and over again about trusting men. We are not to trust or put our trust in men unless those men are teaching from the Word. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, and even at that, don't trust what they say until you go to the Word yourself yep. and verify. Have the Holy Spirit show you. I mean, one um, of my, but yeah. oh, I don't know how many people remember the movie called Abyss, which was, I believe, uh, 80s, uh, about that mining team. It's in the bottom of the ocean there, you know, and they there's aliens down there or whatever. It's probably symbolic of the bottomless pit or something. But the scene I remember the most is where the Navy SEAL guy falls off. He was in a mini sub and he falls off the edge and he's sinking down in the abyss. And the pressure of the water just crushes that little submarine like a tin can i mean just crushes him up into nothing in there and it's like same thing this guy was showing in his vacuum tests you know he took a pressurized suit and put it in this chamber and sucked all the air out made a perfect vacuum and that suit literally crushed up into this little tiny chunk and he's like so tell me how astronauts can be out there working on the space shuttle all the stuff he said it's nonsense he said they would be dead there's no way anything can survive or live in space and i think that's what why they called them the van allen belts i believe that it is a barrier that we are not allowed to pass through yeah that's uh my next my next video actually talking about the uh, dome and uh code word Ben Allen Bells <laughs> really mean dome <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna get into that pretty soon awesome any questions from anybody in the chat yeah if anybody has any questions for Robbie or go ahead and post them in the chat room Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, when we're talking about the fake moon landing. Uh, yes, the world believes that it, it happened. A lot of the saints actually believe that it happened. But the, there's, there are a bunch of truthers out there that are not honest truthers, because honest truthers come to the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ. But there's a lot of dishonest truthers out there uh, who want to deny Christ and they won't go as far as saying that the moon landing was to hide the biblical cosmology but uh, the reason why was because of the Cold War you know to uh, to show um, to show Russia that we had some special weapons and stuff so yeah they know we faked it but they don't take it to the spiritual aspect because of Satan trying to hide God's creation. They take it to a more physical aspect and try to say it's Russia, which 
in all actuality, it's kind of that's kind of spiritual too, because what we see playing out with Russia now is what we uh, read in the end of the bu- end of the book. So, um, it's just was pointing out that the the fake moon landing, showing that it's fake, is important. But what you're doing in your film and your documentary, Robbie, showing that it's fake and the real re or the spiritual, the good reason why uh, they need to know that it's fake, not not the straw man that the world pushes. Yeah. Uh, one question for Robbie he says, "What is a good Bible to read?" What is a good Bible to read? Well, I mean, I would definitely look at uh, you know King James is a uh, very good bible uh as far as translation i mean for myself personally i mean i look at uh, you know a few different translations but i think really when it comes down to it just looking at uh, a bible if someone said specifically you know where should i start i have never really read the bible i'm looking at it for the first time i personally always recommend reading the new testament first uh for me it's important to really truly understand the story of the old testament and what it's foreshadowing is understanding the new testament so to me you know running right to understanding who the savior is you know the claims jesus claiming i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me well the idea is the deity of jesus who is jesus and i mean that's the paramount question i mean Pilate asked like what is truth as truthers as people that are seeking the truth it all comes down to the embodiment of truth which is jesus so i personally say you know read the new testament get to know the person truth the true creator i mean it specifically says that jesus is the creator of all things i mean that's profound that alone sometimes rocks people because you know we start to talk about you know god or you know jesus the son of god and all of the trinity we can get into that but really the nuts and bolts of it is jesus is the creator the author of creation is jesus himself you know he created all things all things were created by him for him you know we get into all these things these are profound things but again to understand When people read the Old Testament sometimes, they just don't understand. There's wars, there's all sorts of things, there's genealogies. But when you understand that the entire story, right from the beginning, even into Genesis 3.15, when it was promised that, you know, the seed, you know, would crush the head. Again, the idea is that God would send, you know, the Messiah would come. The entire story is through there. So I would say that... uh, you know, reading the New Testament, to understand the Old Testament. And like I said, there's a lot of great translations. Starting off, sometimes I tell people that, uh, you know, it's good. If King James is tough, uh, you have a hard time with that English. You know, don't be discouraged. There's other translations. You know, look around, find something. You know, there are some bad translations out there. But really, when it comes down to it, especially beginning and reading something, understanding the Word of God, you'll find what's really interesting in all these translations and all these different things that have happened throughout time. One thing I found very interesting is really when you get into the nuts and bolts, most of the deity passages are things when it comes down to very, very important passages. It was almost like they can't be distorted. They can't be completely changed. And I find that very interesting on the majority of, of translations. But again, that's a whole show for another time, getting into what translations do we trust, what translations are evil, what are corrupt. I think that you got to just put your faith in God. You know, um, faith comes by hearing and hearing and reading and doing all these things. And it's important to just get, dig into the Bible because really, you know, you can look at it any which way. But really, um, you know, it's, by, it's, it's God, you know, talking to you. A lot of people say, you know, how does God communicate? And, uh, you know, personally, there's, there's different ways um, that are very profound. But I look at it like he does communicate to us through the Bible, uh, through his word and uh, start there. Right. If you want to know exactly what thus saith the Lord, uh, just open up his word and it's like he is talking to you. And if you're in a daily reading, uh, he'll he'll open your spiritual understanding to different things that just happened in your daily life and show you how to apply them to your life. Uh, But also while you're looking for a Bible, um, the the version I, I'm right there with Robbie. The King James version I believe is the best in the English translation. Uh, it doesn't have any contradictions, um, but any version will work for a humble heart. 
Uh, one thing I would just point out is that no matter how hard you, anybody, tries to understand the Bible, you'll never comprehend it um, for, without the Spirit of God leading and guiding you uh, and telling you um, uh, what it means, giving you his understanding. And so that's the way that God actually wrote the Bible. So that if somebody's a scoffer and they pick up the Bible, well, they'll remain a scoffer. Yep. But if they're picking it up with a humble heart and seeking God, well, he promised that they will find him. So uh, don't be worried too much about the version as much as uh, using God, not your own intellect, but asking God, it's like praying, asking him to reveal his truths to you and, and rely on him to teach you. That's, that's true salvation. That's true growth, you know. So um, even as you grow in the Lord and you're trying to get closer to him, it still works the same way. He's the one who reveals and opens our eyes to even more deeper truths and even a deeper understanding. Uh, so, King James Bible, if you can help it, but, and also like Robbie said, the these and the thous, um, if they're an issue, I would suggest that uh, just go ahead and read through it for a few days. Like, you say it's a problem, but there might be a problem if you're trying to understand but if you're just asking God to reveal his truths to you and you read a couple passages or a couple verses, the context of such, God will open your understanding to what to to how that the just fit in perfectly. Uh, so uh, I would say just don't be afraid. Try it for a week and see if after a week it's not just easy to read right through those uh, old English words. But um, uh, just my little tidbit on that. Sorry about that. Uh, are you guys there? Yeah. Yeah. Turn my mic on. <laughs> right. I'm I, I, I agree because I'll say this. Um, as far as myself, when I first became a, a new believer, I um, I started out in the NIV for the first two years. Um, now, the great thing about what happened was, naturally, God moved me over to the just the King James. Um, but I learned a lot studying the NIV in the beginning because that's that's how I, I uh, that's what He used to teach me a lot of the material um but as i got a little bit stronger and more versed in the scriptures i started uh, desiring a deeper understanding a deeper meaning of um, what the scripture was trying to tell me and that's where he started leaning me towards more of the um king uh, king james so i mean that's at least my story for it and how uh why yeah we recommend the king james because it, it gives you a little bit more meat um but he can teach you from um, most most of the uh, Bibles that are out there. Just you know, that's one of those things that pray and let him lead you in those uh, in that direction. Yep, exactly. I grew up; our family always had King James, so that's all we were ever taught growing up. We never got into any of the. I think we had a new King James when that came out. And that was about as much as we did. We didn't even really know about the NIV till much later. So we were never ever, we never had that in our household. Always had King James. That's why it's funny, you know, when we talk about that dreaded Mandela effect. People come to me and are like, well, don't you realize this has changed, that changed? I'm like, nope. No changes. It just depends on what versions you've been reading. Yep. Right. For us, luckily, as my wife and I were getting saved, uh, we had some close friends who already knew the differences in the Bible. So um, we got a good education on the different versions right as we were getting saved. 
But uh, for somebody who's seeking the Lord, they need to not worry about what version they're reading. They just need to seek God. And because in, in every version, it has, you know, Jesus deity, that he's the only way uh, and that eternal life is truly the gift of salvation. But in the other versions, they have contradictions in them as well. So here's the thing. If somebody has a humble heart, God's going to open their eyes to the parts of the Bible in, the, in these perversions, the parts in them that have the truth and will cloud their mind, cloud their understanding to the contradictions or the confusion because God's not the author of confusion. Yeah, I mean, me personally, like I said, I mean, uh, kind of like Carlos, I came to NID when I got saved, and uh, it was just absolutely incredible for me. I mean, in my journey, I mean, I've moved, I've looked, investigated, but I think sometimes there's this trepidation, there's this fear, and we get almost caught up in it. And I always like to look at it like, if you were living in a day and an age where Bibles were completely outlawed, illegal, you had no access to a Bible, you couldn't find one anywhere, and all of a sudden you're by yourself and you came across an NIV, <laughs> okay, it had been months or years since you had a Bible, and all of a sudden you found one. You gonna toss that in the garbage? Or are you gonna hold on to it and like read it? I mean, like the whole idea is like certain things I believe are so powerful they can't be corrupted. I mean, we got to the point with the Mandela where they were saying, Oh, Satan went back in time and changed the Bible, which is absolute nonsense. But even the versions that have been changed, which they have been and there's problems there. That's a whole other discussion for another time. Have you noticed though that the key verses, some of the strongest like deity or very important verses. I mean, all you know, everything's important in the Bible. But for example, John, my celebrate truth YouTube channel. I end all my videos with, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John fourteen six. Take a parallel or go and look at every single translation, even the disgusting New Age, uh, distorted, blasphemous, whatever you want to do. Look at John fourteen six. Tell me in what translation it has completely been perverted. Uh, I did it one time, and I'm like, interesting. So then I started doing that research on a whole bunch of other really key verses. Like key verses, not like, by the way, um, this one word was changed. that has no relevance whatsoever to my salvation. You know, But again, it's just intriguing. When you go to like take 10 really important verses to you that are very paramount to the whole idea of what Christianity or what the gospel teaches that would be disastrous if it was taught. For example, why isn't there a translation? And I'm talking a mainstream translation where it says there are multiple ways to God. John 14, 6 says, no, you have been taught, you know, uh, you know, that there are only one way. I tell you that there are many ways to God. But I find it very intriguing. It's almost like there's like this law in place that God might allow perversions and stuff. But ultimately, certain things that are salvational or so paramount to the gospel can never be perverted. And maybe I'm wrong in this. Maybe I didn't look into it deep enough and maybe I'll be corrected. But what I find intriguing is take a bunch of those really key verses and run down the line and tell me, you know, like John 14, 6. I did it one day and I was like, not one of them had perverted it to the point where it distorted what Jesus said, saying he was the only way to God. So I find that intriguing in all the, you know, all the evil in the world and how easy would it be for a bunch of people to get together and just do a new translation and distort that one thing that all roads lead to God, that there are multiple ways to God. And yet it has not been done in all the mainstream big translations. So it's just a little tidbit. I'm not I'm not advocating and saying that there's not bad translations out there. And again, this is a touchy subject. I'm just saying, you know, when it comes to the basis, God is bigger than even, you know, what translation or if something was removed. Even if something was removed, can God not restore it? I think so. But really, come down to it, pray about it, research it, just like anything. Just like when it comes to, you know, going back to scientism, when it comes to vaccinations. It's up for people to really search and find out. Really, the idea of this whole thing is that parents should be the ones to decide if they're going to vaccinate their children, not the government. No one should force anyone. It should be the parents that decide. In the same way, you should decide truly if you have a good conscience about it, you seek the truth, you've uh, searched God, and you say, God, you know, is communicating to me. He's drawing me to this version. Maybe he's drawing you to that version for a time just to learn something and then move on to another translation. So there's something so much bigger than just one thing or we trying to recommend a certain, you know, KJV is the answer to everything. I mean, there's even issues there. But overall, God's word, there is no issue with that. That's the, the point. I think that God, what is God's word? What is the word of God? It's Jesus, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. I mean, getting into... What is that, First John? 
someone help me out here. Is that First John? Well, that's John 1, verses John 1. 1 through 3, and then verse 14 tells us that the Word became flesh, yeah. and we beheld His glory, the only uh, glory of the begotten. Yeah, so the, I guess the verses then that uh, come down to, you know, who the, the Word is, and the Word becoming flesh, you know, that's the point. The point is, that's the embodiment of the Word. That is truly who we can, you know, there is no other name given uh, when it comes down to it, it's, you know, believing and that's it. Nothing added. There's nothing added to the gospel. It's not the gospel plus a translation. It's not the gospel plus a, um, you know, a certain doctrine. It's not the gospel plus a, a way of thinking. It is the gospel plus nothing. It is, that is it, right? End of story. Right. Amen. There's nothing added to it. And that's the beautiful thing about it. So again, we're, we're, we're I mean, this is getting into more salvational thing. And I guess we're talking about scientism, but really this is the whole idea that Satan has been trying to distort, destroy the simplicity of creation and the simplicity of the gospel that if only you would believe you would be saved, but you won't. And you therefore will not be. Right. Amen. Uh, and that's all Satan cares about is, just getting people to not believe. Yep. That's the whole um, goal. Uh, get people to doubt. Uh, get people to think, hmm, I don't know. I don't think that's true. And that's the whole part of the scientism thing. You know, what is science's main goal? It is to prove that God doesn't exist. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When, with the biblical, with the correct biblical cosmology and understanding of the flood and why the flood happened science actually re when you reduplicate it and uh, test it observe it um it proves the bible <laughs> you know like uh, there's nothing in the bible that the bible is not a scientific book but everything that it talks about in the bible that's scientific is absolutely true um it's kind of funny how people want to pick and choose, like what you were saying earlier in the broadcast, Robbie. They'll say one thing for evolution. Yeah, it's literal. But when it comes to uh, their worldview, because heliocentricity is a worldview. I mean, they, could, they can be a saint and still believe in a ball earth. Mm -hmm. um, but they still have it's still a worldly world view <laughs> and they don't they haven't gone to the word of god for uh, total um understanding yeah, it's that's the point too is you can be a, you can be a saint you can be a believer and still believe in this i would never ever say that this is a salvational topic in the sense that i would question someone's salvation if you didn't believe 100 percent, you know in my model and what i'm getting in that interpretation but again what about those those people's children what about, again, that's the whole disastrous thing. We're seeing that basically many, many people are walking away from the Bible and away from the church the minute they get to like high school, college, university level. That is what's destroying it is because scientism or education or however it's been set up is showing the fallacy, showing the, you know, the Bible to be false. Therefore, it can't be trusted. It was just a fairy tale. It was just like believing the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus, or it was something to make me feel good. It was something to get me by. It was a crutch. It was whatever, you know, and even the scientists, even I have quotes in Scientism Exposed um, showing that, you know, that's what you get from the Bible. Is it's just there for moral. It's just guidance. It's just a book, you know, <clears throat> to teach you how to be good and be nice and but it's definitely not the truth you know we know the truth we've already observed we've done these tests we know that the stars aren't small points of light that they're you know 18,000 times bigger than even our sun you know understand that, and that we live in a you know a medium universe and we have a medium sun and you know everything's just kind of dismissed I mean even looking at the heliocentric you know, planets and everything that we've been taught, like the Earth has no significance. It's not even the biggest planet. I mean, yeah, it sustains life. But really, if you look around, there's planets that are, you know, way bigger than the Earth. They say, you know, our sun is even significant in the sense that there's suns that are way bigger than our sun. It I makes know. no sense. I you remember know? that video. <laughs> they show Earth and then our sun and then these other ones and it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. It's just completely, totally stupid. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I tackle it. I tackle it. I make sure that it's in there just to show the absurdity of it. You know, especially when God said he put stars in the sky for times and seasons and he put the stars in the sky for us. So you explain to me that a star that's, you know, 
light years away that we can't even see without like eight with without the magic Hubble telescope that magically can see billions of miles away. I mean, I don't know what kind of lens they have or what kind of technology can see billions of miles away. But nonetheless, these things that cannot be seen by the naked eye, what relevance would they have when they were for us and for our purpose? You know, for times and seasons. And so it's clearly spelt that way. But again, they like to distort. They like to make it sound like, no, there's no purpose. It's an accident. The Bible is a lie. And if they get us on one thing, if they get us doubting one thing in the Bible, it starts, it's just like that Trojan horse. It just comes in and away it goes. And it starts eroding our faith. It erodes our belief. And then we start making excuses. I mean, I have like, I have clips in the film of scientists themselves saying that Christians after we made discoveries, would start saying, well, that's allegory or that's poetry. So they even know when people started moving into the, well, that's allegory or that's poetry. And you're going to find with a lot of Christians, oh, that verse wasn't meant to be literal. No, no, <laughs> no, that's poetry. You read, you read Psalms before. You read Psalms. And a lot of people say, well, that's just poetry. Well, I'm sorry. If I say that I ran like a fast gazelle through the forest, the fact was I'm not a gazelle. But you get the illustration that I'm, I'm sleek, I'm running, I'm fast. It illustrates a, a reality, a truth. The same thing in Psalms. If you, if you want to take poetry, what would it, you know, what would it serve? What would it, you know, but even to get outside of Psalms, get into, you know, like we'll talk about Joshua, like we said before. And again, when it came down to it, nobody's going to debate that that's poetry. Oh, no, that's historical. Okay, well, what's going on there? Well, that's the way they saw the world. That's the way they understood it. Okay, let me get this straight. So they really didn't understand the universe. Therefore, men were stupid and they wrote the Bible. Wait a minute. Whoa. What about God? You know, God breathed. What about it's God writing through men? So right there is a massive attack. The minute you move it into man wrote the Bible. And that's the one of the biggest things that people run away from the Bible. Oh, man wrote the Bible. It's been changed. There's errors. You know, of course, there'd be errors and there'd be all sorts of problems because man is fallible. Right. Again, we have a big problem. But the fact is that God, man didn't write the Bible. God wrote the Bible through men. And that's the big difference. And Satan would try to destroy that. And the minute that opens up to an interpretation that these men weren't very smart, they were really kind of ancient in their ideas of the universe or of the stars. And they were kind of, you know, not really intelligent. We're a lot more smarter now. That opens it up to destroying the credibility, the fact that it's God breathed, it's infallible. You know, again, it's inspired. It's the truly the word of God written through men. But again, that's why people start doubting is because it was just a bunch of stupid men writing, not really understanding because they really didn't have much more than sticks and stones. You know, like this is the kind of nonsense we get taught, you know, with dinosaurs and like cavemen. We were cavemen one day and we, we didn't know how to communicate. We beat each other over the head <laughs> to communicate. Yeah, it was just a group of sling blade characters, you know, all sitting around talking about French fried potatoes and mustard and biscuits. I'm sorry, but if you're Adam and Eve and you're walking with God in the cool of the day or whatever, you are incredibly intelligent because you have the author of all wisdom, of all truth. You would, I mean, I'll tell you one thing. Adam and Eve would probably make anyone look pale in comparison to any of their intelligence on the amount that they would understand and know being able to communicate directly with God. So this idea that once we were apes and we evolved and we were like grunting and groaning and one day we had, a, you know, this is, this is the narrative that we're taught to follow their evolutionary lie. Everything falls apart if all of a sudden we destroy that. So scientism exposed will really start to destroy all of their scientism foundations that they have set up that have been, you know, not disputable, not debatable. They're proven. Wait a minute. When people discover that, hey, what if this isn't proven? What if this isn't true? What if there is massive holes in these theories and these aren't science at all? This is just theories of men. And not to mention, this is an evil agenda trying to go against the only truth and the only salvation for mankind. Wait a minute. This becomes bigger. And I'm not going to rest my entire eternity. I'm not going to rest my entire belief system and my worldview on something that is as shaky as these crazy, I mean, You've got Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lauren Krauss, and you've got like Bill Nye, the science guy. These guys are clowns. And yet these guys are the guys that the media are parading as the smartest scientists around. I mean, we should be ashamed that we follow these guys. You've got Neil deGrasse Tyson dropping mics on the stage describing gravity. You know, what kind of scientist, when you ask them about, can you explain gravity to me? He drops a mic. There's gravity using a curse word or whatever. I mean, this is crazy. And then you've got like really proved Bill there was Nye. density. <laughs> Yeah, well, dense in the head. And again, these guys are so high <laughs> that they know everything. And we're all imbeciles. We're all stupid. And they talk down to us. And again, this is what the Bible warns of.
beware of the wisdom of the world. God will make the wisdom of the world, the, the wisest men, look like what? Fools, right? Yep. He will make every, and again, look at these verses where it talks about the wisdom of the world. What does God think of the wisdom of the world? He doesn't just think it's bad. He thinks it's foolish because yep. he says it's silly. And he's like, these guys have made all these people believe that they, they're running around, flying around the universe. The sun is traveling a million miles, you know, through the universe. They believe this. And he's probably laughing and saying, how foolish, how foolish that everyone is starting to believe such nonsense that they can't even validate through their scientific method, you know, which is good and wholesome and true and pure. And they won't even apply their own scientific method that was created in order to validate truth. They will just believe in lies. Why? Because they don't want to be accountable to a creator. Because deep down inside, people have a hostility towards God. So it's time that we admit, and people that have been following this, you know, get on your knees and say, for too long, I've gone against this. Because deep down inside, I have a rebellious heart. There is a sin problem. And the documentary deals with the sin problem and hopefully highlights to people what truly is going on in men's hearts and why they so quickly will grab to something that can destroy God in their mind. Because once it's destroyed, whew, I don't have to be accountable anymore. I can do what I want, say what I want, and hey, I'm just an animal. I might as well live like one. And you know what? I'm just going to live for me, and I can be selfish. And, you know, deep down inside, it's the whole self idea. Live for self. Because, hey, well, we only live once, right? That's one of the things that drives me absolutely up the wall is when I see people making comparisons, well, animals do this and animals do that. And I'm like, we're not freaking animals. That's what we don't do exactly. that stuff. We don't behave exactly. like another animals. Lie. Yeah. yeah, another lie. Another huge lie. The whole idea that we're all just animals. Hey, we're just a mammal, aren't we? No, no, no. We're not. And there's another huge lie. Uh, you're starting to even see that in the whole like uh, LGBT debate or the gay debate. It's like, animals do it. See, yeah. it's normal in nature. This whole idea of nature, Mother Earth, animals, all this stuff is a deception, not only to destroy the credibility of God's word and all that, but also the morals. Have you ever noticed that now it's moving into the morals to yep. be able to validate these these things that are happening, just like the gay thing? They're now using animals to support the fact that, see, we're all animals. Animals do it as well, therefore. And again, they're using nature. They're using this whole narrative that we're just nothing more than animals, that there are no morals. There is no absolute truth. Everything's subjective. You know, postmodernist thought that whatever you believe is true. There is no absolute. And again, the whole thing comes down to a Big Bang, heliocentric, accident, universe. It's true. Then really, there is no purpose for anything. And really, you make up your own rules. Because really, who cares? At the end of the day, there's nothing to answer to. And at the end of the day, you're just going to die. So there are huge problems. And it's not just, well, you, we, we fear death and we don't want to believe that there's nothing afterwards. Again, look around, look at creation, look at life itself and ask yourself, you know, when you see a, like they say, when you see a painting, you know, just, you know, spontaneously, you know, it come to being. I mean, there was a painter, right? You know, you see a building, you know, there's a builder. When you see creation, you know, there's a creator. It is written in everyone's heart. Everyone can see this plainly if you really evaluate it and understand and look to it and not listen to the media and scientism. If you evaluate your heart, your own self, you will see that God's been crying out for you for a long time. He's been showing you everywhere and you've been ignoring. And, you know, it's time to it's time to come home. It's time to be able to see the truth and, and respond to it. And Scientism Exposed will be a powerful, powerful film to open many people's eyes to the truth, especially the reasons why they started laughing and moving away from God in the first place was because scientism, their entire assault uh, through the mind, through their deceptions, in destroying the credibility of God's creation uh, with uh, his written word. Yeah, that's why I think it's very important, you know, that people do get some hard copies of your film so that they can share it around. Take it to church, take it to relatives friends whoever you know and, and spread it around that is how we operate in this war that we are in yeah yeah that's why i got mine well getting yeah, mine. No, and i appreciate it like like i mean i obviously i mean everyone that's you know involved in this and doing ministry i mean it always helps it takes time it takes resources it takes money and again i never want to come across that you know i'm always constantly like asking for money i never really have 
And again, there's people always that are asking, hey, how can I help out? You know, how can I? And again, I'm not going to be ashamed of that. I mean, I'm always going to make my stuff available for free. I know there's many people out there financially, they can't, they don't want to. Um, and again, you restrict a lot of people sometimes when you make it, you know, you got to pay to watch this. So my stuff will always be free. But again, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, someone, you know, could, uh, you know, pay for something. And again, like I said, being able to get a physical copy where they could hand out, uh, where they could get it into people's hands that no- normally wouldn't go. And sometimes when you're dealing with something that's like almost two hours long, it's tough sometimes to send a link and have someone sit on a computer or go to YouTube and watch something for two hours. But, you know, in the comfort of their home and their DVD player, you know, this will open up a lot more people uh, to the deceptions and, and showing them um, the truth of, uh, you know, truly what's going on. So, but I appreciate everyone's support. I mean, it's been overwhelming at the beginning, um, even just launching it. You know, people are asking in ways that they can support or help out. And I appreciate every one of you that, that are, you know, helping to support and, and buy DVDs. Like I said, it's a huge deal for me. It's the first DVD I've ever released. Um, I have it on for a super good price right now for the pre-orders. Only fourteen ninety-nine. That's Canadian too. So for all your Americans, it works out to like twelve or thirteen dollars. I mean, it's even cheaper. Oh, that's but, even uh, better. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, your dollar is even stronger than the Canadian dollar. So I mean, it really works out you to this actually have not dollars? much at all. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was just joke. I said you guys actually have money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't just have snow in our igloos. Yeah, that's the thing. We like sometimes exchange fish in our igloos, but yeah, we're now down to we're into money now. We got money, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so Robbie, yeah, I no, want, it's, it's, I want it's really ten cool. DVDs, and I will give you five steelhead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eh? I want I, I want four arrowheads. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing with Canada, right? A lot of people think that there's all sorts of, uh, you know, like yeah, we we got heat last year. That was kind of cool, you know. We finally got. <laughs> we were doing fires for quite a while, like up until about last year, you know, just get just light the fire to get that heat. Now we got furnaces. It's pretty cool. You guys are lucky with all that gas technology and stuff. And speaking of technology, yeah, we, we're start. We got computers there a few years ago. That was kind of cool. So, yeah, I'm actually on a yeah smartphone now, but. Uh, but anyways, yeah, back to the whole thing. No, appreciate everyone. Like I said, I'm so excited for everyone to see it. Uh, go to CelebrateTruth.org. You can see me on uh, YouTube. My channel is Celebrate Truth. It's easy. You can type in Scientism Exposed. I'm sure you'll find the trailer or the information. Um, go on Facebook, Celebrate Truth, or even Scientism Exposed. There's a uh, Facebook page for the film. And uh, like I said, got the uh, pre-order for the DVDs. Everything's going to be released on November 21st, 2016. The worldwide release so don't worry it will be free on youtube or you can pick up yourself a dvd or a few for friends or to lend out and uh man everything's appreciated just love the encouragement the support um it's great to uh, to be part of uh the um the truthers uh christ network uh it's been great getting to know kip and with us and uh awesome tonight with you carlos to be able to get together and be able to talk about these things and we need to stand together and uh, you know, in Christ, and uh, we've got a huge commission, man, preaching the gospel and exposing the world's lies. I mean, it's a huge deal. So it's great to have other brothers that, that we can come together and we can work together and um, just, yeah, do some powerful things in the name of the Lord. Amen to that. That's why we get attacked so much, because we stick to the word. And it seems that the more you do that, the more the attacks pour in. But doesn't stop me i'm gonna keep on going i don't care what happens <laughs> well if god can be for you who could be against you right exactly. I mean, everything will bounce off right yeah yep that's why i have the verse i have up on the front of my desk tonight <laughs> but yeah um we're going on the top of the next hour so we, we're trying to kind of keep it down to the two hours now but i mean it's been a great Two hours doesn't even feel like it's been two hours. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I recommend people going, if they can, grab that DVD. And like you said, it will be free on your channel. After yep. what date is it again? Well, 11... November 21st. I mean, I'll be shipping okay. out the DVDs as well, but pretty much at the same time. So even if you don't get your DVD, you'll be able to watch it on YouTube before your DVD even arrives, right? So it's just everything's releasing on November 21st. That's the day that's set in stone. 
um, the DVDs are going to be like shipping out uh, like next week. So I would imagine that it will kind of come around the same time. But either way, if you don't get your DVD for two days afterwards, you'll still be able to see it, right? So um, that's the the cool thing is I'll be releasing it. So and if people don't want to pay or or they can't, I mean it, it's offered for free. So but again, well, how you can help is just share it. You know, social media is really strong, or email it out, or and that's what I'm really hoping even with the YouTube is that people will share. Share it, just uh, share it, get the word out, you know, like it. All these things really, really help uh, with the rankings. More people are curious, what's this about? Um, and because of the nature and the way it's set up, um, and just even the caliber, I mean, I put a lot of time and effort into the production values. Uh, so I think it's really going to speak volumes, and people are going to take it a lot more serious um, because of the production value, because of the people that are involved, the editing. All these things are really important, the sound. To me, each time that we can, you know, up our craft, what we're doing and make it more and more professional, people take it serious. There's like a seriousness to it. It's like, well, okay, well, I might have laughed off this, you know, video presentation that was really poorly done, but this is really well put together. I'm going to take this even a bit more serious. Like, and I mean, even when I started off doing videos and stuff like that, it wasn't good by a long shot. It was still powerful. Don't get me wrong. But there's a whole other crowd of people out there that will only watch something that's really tight, well produced, put together. And again, that's what I hope it will go to a wider audience. And hopefully it will really get, um, you know, handed out in many churches. I think so many churches need to see something like this and without turning people off. So really my goal, you know, obviously the evangelistic area was there getting the gospel out. But really my heart was for a lot of people that were in the church that need to see or see look at more than just evolution as the deception that there's a lot more going on and hopefully and i know within churches a lot of churches just aren't going to go to a youtube link like try to go get a pastor to watch a two-hour movie on youtube you know there's the odd, odd one <laughs> but hand a dvd to him he'll get around to it throw it in the dvd player so you know pastors can see this people in the church and hopefully, you know, people will, will grab a copy, even just if they're in their local church, hand it out. Start handing it out to people in the church. They'll start surfacing it. It'll be like, hey, you got to check this out. Hey, check this out. So many times, that's when it becomes very viral within the church, local church. And uh, I really think that, uh, you know, in order to be really strong in this message, um, exposing scientism, um, we need the whole unity of the church. We need the, the church or the people, and we need them to understand that there is a lot bigger uh, things at play here and I think that by releasing this on DVD and there's people that have already picked it up and saying I'm picking up an extra copy so that I can give to my pastor or I can give it to someone in the church and say hey when you're done with it give it to someone else and who knows and I guess we'll see in time you know how many people the testimonies even when I release the global lie of so many people that start reading the Bible for the first time I mean I'm talking to people still that called me up or got a hold of me um, that really said, hey, where do I start? You know, I've uh, never read the Bible my whole life. And there's been incredible testimonies. And it was such a blessing, just an amazing thing to be part, to be used in such a part, seeing people come to God, to open the Bible for the first time and uh, just rejuvenate their relationship and get that restored. And so to me, it's, it's really exciting. And I think this, just being able to be put on DVD um, and being able to be handed out, will go to a whole new audience, not just the YouTube and social media. There's a lot of people that don't even go on Facebook or that even go on YouTube ever. The, this is for those type of people as well. And everyone knows somebody out there that really probably won't go watch a two hour movie, you know, on YouTube. But with a DVD, you know, sitting on the coffee table, they eventually will. And again, I mean, I make it cheap. Like I said, it's fourteen ninety nine Canadian, which works out to about twelve or thirteen dollars. I don't even know uh, American. Uh, it's not a lot. It's not even about the money for me. It's honestly it's joyous just to be able to release this, get the message out. If you want to make copies of it, go to town. Don't even care about that. It's not uh, about that. It's about getting the message out and making this available to the world that more and more people can come to the truth of Jesus and um, exposing the uh, deceptions um, of the world system. Yep, absolutely. Good stuff. Anything you'd like to add there, Carlos? No, I mean, um, <coughs> that's, that's what's important right now is trying to get a lot more people waking up uh, because it seems like people are, there's a lot of people waking up, but when you go outside, you really do notice that people are just still sleeping and uh, and stuff like this is definitely going to help out, man. Stuff like this is, is going to um, at least spark something inside of them that will... 
Um, it, it might not always hit that day. It could be a year. It could be two years from now. But um, that a DVD like this, a movie like this, is definitely going to um, resonate with a lot of people, even if they don't realize, you know, that they're they're <laughs> they're being changed inside. And 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 God can use something like this to really help uh, a lot of people come to His actual truth, His understanding, because the enemy has been trying to um, deceive all of us from the foundation of the word, you know, that's why him changing the shape of the earth, uh, was, was key. Cause, uh, once he did that, he took God and put him like a billion light years away, you know? And, uh, so again, I, I really am excited for this film. I'm definitely one of those guys who's going to have that, uh, uh, movie night with the wife and, Hopefully, this can speak to her as well. So yeah, I mean, um, may well, I'd like to. I mean, I'll, I'll kind of the, one of the first uh, reviews that uh, had came, uh, came in. Uh, Brian Mullen's wife, uh, they had watched it, and uh, they had watched it. Uh, I would be about maybe four nights ago, because people that are involved in the film, you know, they're started to screen it. Anyways, they loved it so much they watched it again. But she actually just posted it, I guess, on Facebook today. I'll just read it real quick here. But she's like, so I was, I was able to watch the sneak a special sneak preview of the new documentary film, Scientism Exposed, of which my husband is an executive producer. Oh, my word. It's among the best things I've ever seen. I am dying to be able to share it right now, 10 more days. While we may be aware of tidbits of deception, outright lies within the scientism realm on this subject or that subject, Scientism Exposed ties it all together and clearly lines the larger agenda at hand and where it's leading. It's just really, really good. Glorifying to our creator and his truth. This film is going to change lives. Robbie Davidson did incredible work. I can't even describe. You just have to see it. You can check out the trailer or pre-order the film at the website, celebratetruth.org. So when she had posted that, I was just like, it just felt really, really good because even some other people that have been able to see it, and I'm like, no, give me honest truth. You know, like, it's okay if you want to be a bit critical. And they're like, Wow, they've been really blown away, and it makes me feel good because even putting it together, I wanted something that would just be powerful, that it would be impactful, that it would be something put together that people have never seen something put together like this, but something that will speak to their soul, that will wake them up from their slumber, and that will make them truly seek the truth of Jesus and the true Creator. Amen to that. Yeah, agree. That's why it's important, and it's coming at a perfect time. Uh, you know, that's a that's a that's one of the best things about it. It definitely is coming at a perfect time, because there's only so many times I could keep saying the same thing to people, and uh, now I can be like, hey, you know, make it a date night. Check this out. I know I am. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, you and your wife really enjoy it. I, I would uh, pray that it will be a real blessing, and that you'll be excited to to share it with as many people as you can. So. It'll be awesome, and uh, hopefully maybe down the road we'll be able to talk. I know you're doing a lot of, of great stuff, and uh, we'll be able to work on something in the future as well. I know that uh, Kip and Mazaz, we've all been talking, and we want to continue to work together and bringing our gifts and our talents together to, to glorify the Lord and to really make an impact, uh, especially for the kingdom and um, exposing this wicked world and uh, helping people to be set free. Yeah, man. I'm a, I'm looking forward to part two if you already got it. <laughs> Get to this thing out. It's like you said, there's a, there's so much information that you have that it wouldn't be a bad thing to start thinking about the the second. Scientism act. exposed the sequel coming 2018. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, this this one alone uh, took like I would say I don't know seven or eight months. I mean, it is a lot of work. So. And again, I'm going to have to take a little bit of a breather and stuff for my family and just to be able to breathe a little bit. Because like I said, I've been pretty consumed with this. But uh, I definitely plan to continue to work on projects, continue to do bigger and better things, uh, all God willing. And uh, we'll just see what God has in store. But I'm excited for the future. Yes. Yep, for sure. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited to start working on the children's program. I mean, I've never had so much fun in a long time that I can relax and laugh and and put you know biblical teachings in there for children and relate to them I mean, it's almost like I feel like I'm getting to be a kid again working on these projects so it's really awesome awesome stuff and I'm really glad the way God is you know running this and 
helping us all come together and helping us all to work together. It has truly been an amazing year just for me. I mean, if people would have asked me a year ago today if I'd have been doing any of this stuff, I'd have been like, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you look at this studio you're in, man. I know. <laughs> How much was all that? T all those TVs? How much they cost? <laughs> I went after landfill to landfill to landfill to buy all these TVs. <laughs> it's got to be so hot in there. Oh, man. I'm Hopefully they're not Samsung like... TVs. You don't want them blowing up on you. <laughs> yeah. I got like 200 um, extension cords down here. <laughs> like, yeah, you got 200 extended, 200 remote controls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got lots of remote controls. I did notice, though. I did notice you have a globe sitting at the very top there on the top screen there. Just, just a, just a little bit of a bit yeah, of a globe I in there as well that. too. I can change that. But that's okay. You expose the globe. It's all good. Keep that globe right there. Well, because I looked at it this way, I'm like, it looks like a globe, but it also kind of looks like flat Earth. So. <laughs> the top. Yeah, one, I guess yeah. you can look at it both ways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like I say, get people questioning. That's for sure. I mean, I have a I have a globe on the cover of uh, Scientism Exposed, right? But again, it's uh, it's all about that. I tell people all the time, though, it's not about telling people what to believe. Just question what scientism has told you what to believe. Yeah, because I don't like when people get hypersensitive and then it's like, oh, if you see a globe, oh, it can't have nothing to do with them. They got a globe. It's like, no, 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 no. I was like, don't do that. Don't start doing that yeah. stuff. It's bad yeah. enough. We deal with the Illuminati symbolism and all that. We don't need to start doing more. Yeah. Yeah, careful. Don't lift your hands because you might do the wrong uh, hand signal and that will be it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah. It just, it it's like you almost better ridiculous. off turn off the camera. Hold on, I can't scratch my my beard right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got this fly in my nose, but I just can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dare move. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll screenshot it real quick. Yep, exactly. But yeah, thanks for coming on tonight, Robbie. It's been a great night, and thanks for coming on, Carlos. Um, it's been a good discussion, and I hope and pray that it edifies the listeners. So anything yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys would like to say before we end? Go check out that that movie. Get that DVD. Support our uh, brother here, and um, you know this is what this is what shows like this is about. You know to help one another and and uh, be edifying to anyone who's listening um, now and in the future. So guys, support uh, support Robbie. You know, go to celebratingtruth.org and uh, check out that video. And if you can't, hey, just watching it and sharing it amongst your friends on YouTube will be uh, will be a big help too. So hopefully, um, you guys go and do that. And uh, thank you for coming out and hanging out with us. Yeah, that's awesome. And like the same thing as well. Just uh, like I said, there's so many ways to support it. If you believe that it's impactful, it's something that you really want to put. Um, you know, your name behind and be able to get it out there and it's something that's important to you, then yeah, I mean, just sharing it, getting the word out, buy a DVD, uh, any which way. I mean, there's so many different ways um, and everything really helps. And I appreciate everyone that's uh, been able to support and encourage me. Uh, even pray, uh, pray. I mean, that to me is really important, just the people that are praying for me and just the amount of attack, even if this project that I was under and people that were under that were part of this film, um, Again, prayer is a really powerful thing, so I'm really appreciative for all the prayer warriors that are out there. And, uh, yeah, Celebrate Truth um, on YouTube, CelebrateTruth.org. You can see all the information. Uh, if you are on Facebook, you know, add me. If uh, I'm not a friend, Robbie Davidson, you'll find me pretty easily, I'm sure. Um, love for you to be part of it. Uh, got more of my personal life on there, and uh, I just uh, enjoy getting to know each one of you as time goes on. And I'm just so appreciative for just everything. Um, and ministry and continuing on work that God has for me and the people that uh, God brings uh, into my life and doing the ministries that we do. So it's just a really incredible honor. Thanks so much for having me, Kip, uh, on the show. It was great meeting you, Carlos. I uh, look forward to speaking more uh, even off the show. And um, yeah, Matthias had to take off, but uh, I'll, get, I'll hit him up at some point. And uh, yeah, just thanks for everyone that was here, uh, the questions. Uh, from the supporters, and you guys are awesome. Always love the D13 crowd. You guys are uh, right there. You're passionate. You're encouraging. You're exciting, 
And uh, you guys are truth warriors, and I uh, just love to be uh, with uh, each one of you as uh, we all search for the truth and we glorify the one who is the truth, the one way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. I'm out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow we are going to have a really awesome show with Drew. We are going to go into uh, Mount Sinai and really try to get into detail of what went on at Mount Sinai when God appeared in the mountain. I mean, we were talking about it here the other night, and we're going to turn it into a really, really, really good show tomorrow. So be sure to stay tuned for that. It'll be tomorrow, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Thank you all for joining the chat. Thank you all for listening, and we will talk to you later. Good night. <laughs>